for our peoples here, just realize that the British were here for over 200 years. They're gone. We're still here. The French were also here for 200 years. They're gone, and we're still here. The Americans have only been here um, on this particular case, and right here where we are since uh, it's been 197 years, so not quite 200, and the Indian population is rising. So, you know, we've been there, done that. British here, gone. French here, gone. The United States is just the latest occupiers of our territories. Michigan territory is extended to what you now call Minnesota, Wisconsin. That was all part of Michigan, as was Eastern Dakotas, Northern Iowa, um, Illinois, in northern Indiana and Ohio. So um, what you now see as Michigan is a small part of what was. And the Anishinaabek territory is extended from here all the way up to Hudson Bay. And um, we are the largest language speaker group in North America. But if you just count the part occupied by the United States, that would be the Navajo Nation. But um, our territories have been occupied by Canada and the United States. ancestors weren't trying to survive, they were living, and they thrived, and they had simple tools and simple ways of doing things, but it kept them close to the earth and close to the plants and the trees and the water that gives us all life. Each one of these trees has a purpose, each one of them has a gift that they give us. And of course my ancestry is French, German, English, Scots, Polish, Welsh, but it's also native. Uh, my great 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 grandmother was here on Wyandotte, met my grandfather uh, in Three Rivers, Quebec, and they came into the Detroit area. They are still here uh, in, in Michigan. They would have come here in a birch bark canoe. The most interesting fact of building a dugout canoe or any primitive technology, past technology, is that it's not primitive. It's fairly logical, it's very intuitive. Here you've got a tree and I need to make a boat. Well first of all anybody with half a peanut in their shell would observe that logs float and some logs float better than others. We know especially from a logging, speaking in a logging state, white pine logs float. So they floated them all down a river. Native America, our ancestors globally recognize, hey pine floats and it's easy to work with being a softwood. So it was an intuitive choice to use a white pine for a dugout canoe. The drum brings unity to all tribes. And I'm and I'm talking about the red, yellow, black and white because all tribes need to be representative to help one the oldest living elder today, that's the earth. And that's the culture that I think the young people need to start learning about. It's not just the dancing, although that helps, the storytelling, the spirituality within their own native people. But today, our oldest living elder is hurting. And when the drum plays, it's the voice of the earth, and she calls all tribes, not just the Native American but all tribes, because that's what it's going to take to help heal the earth. Bonjour, Gakana Awea, Michael Wasagija, Kandijan Nakaz, Wikwimikung, Manitou, Menes, and Donjaba, Gaye, Bamijikamagain, Dayan, Nongum, Makwa, Ning Dodem. So, another constellation that we see pretty close to the fissure is. Uh, the constellation that we call Mong, and that's how we say loon uh, in Ojibwe. And does anybody recognize that constellation? One person. Pardon me? Yes, it's an upside down little dipper. If you see, right here is the pale, and right here is the, uh, the North Star. So if you look at it in its reverse situation, it looks like a loon on top of the water. So here's a picture of a close-up, and I know there's lots of loons up here, I'm sure. Picture of the loon, and there's actually a clan of people uh, 
uh, people that are members of the Loon Clan. And if you notice the spots on the back of the, uh, the Loon, we believe that those symbolize the star world. And the one thing about the Loon, the Loon has the ability to go into the underworld and stay for a long period of time. And it also has the ability to fly in the sky. So this, this spirit that we call uh, moves in between the different worlds. And I'll talk a little bit about the underworld and the sky world uh, in just a little bit. So, but the loon has a, a cosmological symbol uh, to us as well. Nindawe Maganaduk, all my relations. Makade Wase Yamaguns in the Dishinakas. Little black, shiny light, prismatic stone I am. Makwa and Dorain, I'm from the Bear Clan. Ojibwe Anishinaabe and Dao. I'm Ojibwe Anishinaabe of the Great Lakes region. Saginaw a King and Donjiba. I'm from the Saginaw Chippewa Indian tribe of Michigan. Namisa Wendan, we Medewian. I'm seeking the Medewian way of life. In 2008, uh, Richard brought some Nob Kauzawin discs um, uh, to the Zebra Wing Center for a special showing for our Saginaw Chippewa Tribal Council. So um, I have much respect and, uh, for this man because uh, he, he is so kind with all his knowledge and being able to share all that he knows. I uh, called my teachers. <laughs> Uh, and Ann Arbor and East Lansing and said you got to come look at this so they did and um, and we turned the corner that these were not frauds that these represented something of, of, of serious significance but they'd never been found anywhere else uh, in North America totally unique um, and so that that presents the question why there what's going on what are they? What were their use? Um, and more questions. And one of the things that um, we can um, derive from the research uh, of the Nob Kauzawin discs is that there's a theme of water. The evolution and significance of the uh, Lake Huron Shore. Indian Trail and Beyond. It, it's a book that I've been working on the manuscript for several years and um, I think I will have it finished this winter, publish it next spring. But it's the evolution and the significance that I'm going to give you the evolution of this road which is much like almost every major highway in Michigan. That is it started out as an Indian Trail and this one goes back a millennium of time. Um, the trail itself, for the most part, follows an, an old ancient glacial ridge, the Algonquin Lake Ridge. And from times it digresses, it goes to the lake, it comes back, it goes around windfalls. It does what all Indian trails do. It meanders, but it meanders in the path of least resistance. After all, if you carried everything you own on your back, you would want to take shortcuts too, and that's what the Indians did. US 23 as an Indian trail has significant importance, which is totally unrecognized in the uh, development of our country. I think one of the most important um, aspects of knowing about the Anishinaabe experience is uh, understanding that the Anishinaabe people have been here since time immemorial in the Great Lakes region. Um, that to me is very important that young people understand um, that experience and um, Indian people have, have contributed to the Great Lakes region in many ways and uh, that's one of the, one of the biggest um, ideas that I hope young people get across is that the Anishinaabe have been here for tens of thousands of years. And the word Anishinaabe itself, it means first man, lowered from above and placed on this earth. So the Anishinaabe people believe that they were here on this continent, North America, since the beginning of time. The Anishinaabe people don't believe in the theory that there was a land bridge in Alaska and they migrated through the United States. 
They believe their God, their creator, placed them here since the beginning of time. Very, very important statement. I think I also want to make sure that people know that we are still here. We still practice our culture, we still use our language, we still have our religion, and we have a great resiliency. And that resiliency and that knowledge of nature and how all things are connected in the universe has led to us thriving no matter what year it was, you know. And that connection to the past, to our environment, is going to enable us to continue to thrive into the future. And you would be surprised at how many times you talk to people around the country and they're actually surprised that uh, Native Americans are still here. And it, uh, it's just bad. <coughs> and some of those people live within 10 miles of this reservation. So it is kind of important that uh, this facility is here to help spread the word that we are still here. And it's also important for programs like this 